I remember when he clocked 80, um, his mandate was to be able to win, I, I can't remember how many, how many, about 8 million souls with the remaining time he has. Can you imagine, you ask a man, what do you want? And anything he says will almost become an instruction for you. And yet he says, all I want is 8 million souls. That's what brought about the Light Up campaign globally. That within the time, I remember one time, you know, just respectfully speaking, I was speaking to one of his people and I said, I hope you people get to rest. Please tell, you know, daddy he should take some time to rest. And he said, no, he will rest when he gets to heaven. As far as the earth is concerned, I must walk the walks of him that sent me. This is a man in his 80s. And there are many, many young people jumping up and down, crying and saying, I want a double portion of his grace without a double portion of the desire. World evangelization, please hear me. No matter how sophisticated you are as far as revelation is concerned, if your life does not directly translate to soul winning, effective soul winning, when it has to do with soul winning, numbers matter. When it has to do with discipleship, numbers may not matter. But ladies and gentlemen, soul winning is one soul at a time. If you win 100 souls versus 10 souls, 100 souls are better by far. But when it has to do with discipleship, you can have 5,000 members versus 20 members and you are dealing with 20 more effective people. I repeat, in soul winning, numbers matter. That means our lives must be all about using every scriptural mechanism to bring people to Jesus. Hallelujah. To bring people to Jesus. One time I was told that, that the Jew was preaching among pastors. It was a pastor's conference or so. And when he was done preaching, was it his leaders or there about? I can't remember the story exactly. Then he made an altar call. These are people he trained, but there's no taking chances. Who knows? May God restore our passion for souls. Amen. Hallelujah. May God restore our passion for souls. May God increase our passion to be greater than our desire for power. May God increase our passion for world evangelization to be greater than our passion for money and fame and all of these things. I am telling you that all that we seek only finds its value when it is connected to purpose. In this case, world evangelization. This is the first component. So if a man fails by any earthly standard in life and you spend your life bringing many to Jesus, the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, please give it to us, it says, They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. We have converted soul winning, respectfully speaking, and focused it largely as a tool for church growth rather than world evangelization. As sincere as that is, there needs to be an adjustment to our understanding. The purpose of soul winning is not more members in church. The purpose of soul winning is to see that the message, the gospel gets to the lost. Are we together now? Yes, and everyone, including those hearing me now, all the who are connected across the globe, it is your business. Don't just be around the harvest field. You are not a laborer because you are looking at the field. You are not a laborer because you are near the field. You are a laborer to the degree to which you are actively participating in the harvest. The second component, very quickly, please write. The second component of the mandate that Jesus left with the church is called discipleship. Please write it down, discipleship. The second component, discipleship. Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all authority in heaven is given to me in heaven and earth, 19. Go ye therefore, now watch this now, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. 20. 
teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. And while you are about the business of teaching and guiding them to observe, I am with you all the way to the ends of the earth. The second component of this mandate Jesus gave us, the Great Commission, is discipleship. What is discipleship? The mentorship of believers to attain maturity and stature through doctrine. The mentorship of believers to attain unto maturity and stature through doctrine. This is what the Bible calls discipleship. The mentorship of believers, those who are now saved, to attain unto maturity and stature through doctrine. Another definition of discipleship, helping believers understand the principles of the kingdom. Helping believers understand the principles of the kingdom through the teaching ministry. Please write. Helping believers understand the principles of the kingdom, the ways of God through the teaching ministry. So we see that the first component of the Great Commission has to do with preaching the gospel. The second component has to do with maturing believers, mentoring them to maturity and stature through doctrine. 